managerial accounting, absorption costing versus variable costing. Now in this final video we are going to prepare a report that reconciles the difference between the absorption costing income that is reported on the external income statement and the variable costing income that may be used for internal reporting and decision making purposes. Now recall scenario A, we didn't have a difference in absorption costing and variable costing net income because production was equal to sales. The number of units produced was the same as the number of units sold. But we'll use this to illustrate the basic calculations in the reconciliation and then we'll move to scenario C where there is a difference in the incomes. In moving from variable costing net income to absorption costing net income, the first thing that we want to do is we want to add to variable costing net income the fixed manufacturing overhead that is in ending finished goods inventory. Recall that uh, the, net, the fixed overhead under absorption costing gets deferred through ending inventory, part of that fixed overhead. So in moving from variable costing to absorption, we add back that fixed overhead that's deferred. So in scenario A, we had 500 units in ending inventory, and in scenario A, our fixed overhead per unit was $50. So 500 times $50, the fixed overhead in ending inventory is $25,000. So we will add that to the $240,000 variable uh, net operating income. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to subtract out from variable costing net income any fixed overhead that was in beginning inventory which would be released into cost of goods sold in the current period under absorption costing. We're following a first in first out cost flow assumption. So we will subtract out the fixed manufacturing overhead in beginning finished goods inventory. So since we produced 9,000 and sold 9,000, there was no change in inventory level, so we had 500 units in ending inventory under scenario A, just as we did under, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, we had 500 units beginning inventory under scenario A and B as a matter of fact. And we assumed that that beginning inventory had the same per unit fixed overhead cost as uh, the units produced this period. So it's the same $25,000. So $240 plus $25 minus $25 does indeed equal $240,000. So uh, that's the reconciliation of the incomes under the two approaches for scenario A. Now let's take a look at scenario B. Now in scenario B, we produced 10,000 units, but only sold 9,000. So there is a difference in income under absorption from that under variable. And the adjustment's gonna follow the same pattern. We'll start with the variable costing net income of 240, and to that we will add the fixed manufacturing overhead in ending finished goods inventory. Now recall that in scenario B, ending finished goods inventory was 1,500 units. And also remember that since we produced 10,000 units, that $450,000 was spread out over more units, so the fixed overhead per unit was only $45 in situation B. So 1,500 times 45 is 67,500. 
So we'll add that 67.5 to the variable costing net income. And then just as we did in scenario B, we're going to subtract the fixed overhead that was in beginning finished goods inventory. So 500 units. And once again, we're going to assume that scenario B is not one month different from A, but a whole different scenario. So the fixed overhead in beginning inventory on a per unit basis, we're assuming is the same as that in ending. Not always true, but that's our assumption here. So the 500 units times 45 dollars, and 500 times 45 is 22,500. So we'll subtract that. And let's check our math. 240 plus 67,5, that's 307,500. Minus 22.5, and that is indeed $285,000. So we have reconciled or explained the difference in income under absorption costing on the external financial statements and under variable costing for internal use.